Now, something we have discussed quite a bit in the past, the shortage of foster carers in this country. At the moment, uh, they're looking for about 8,500 foster carers. This is according to the Fostering Network. Now, a study published later on this week is going to suggest that many disabled people who would dearly like to be foster carers aren't allowed to do it. They're overlooked because of negative attitudes. Well, Alison is a wheelchair user, currently fostering an 11-year-old. Peter Unwin is a principal lecturer in social work at the University of Worcester, author of this study and also uh, still on the social worker register himself, so still knows exactly what he's talking about. Uh, Alison, first of all, good morning to you. Good morning. Um, Tell us just a little bit about yourself, Alison, if you don't mind. Um, Well, I'm um, 43 years old. Um, I'm as you've said, a wheelchair user. Um, um, I have a background in teaching prior to um, going through um, what they thought was a stroke that led to my disability. Um, And since then, I've begun fostering. Why did you want to do it? Um, I wanted to still feel like I could give something back to the community. I wanted to still be busy and I enjoyed still being around and working with children. And what happened when you applied? Um, Initially, I applied to a few agencies um, and was turned down immediately just on grounds of being a wheelchair user. Um, So I gave up the idea for a while and thought I'm not going to be able to do this. Um, luckily, um, a few months later, I happened to bump into a stall from uh, the city council I'm working for now. Yeah. Um, and they were extremely positive. Um, so I went through the application process with them. And tell me, the people who turned you down, did they see you? Did they come out to meet you? What happened? No, not at all. They just turned me down either over the phone or through email. In spite of your teaching experience and indeed actually the life experience that may have perhaps led them to believe that you were someone with empathy and an ability to understand challenge. Yes, completely. Having been through something like I've been through and also coping with disability on a day to day basis, um, I was well placed to understand the needs of a child and find ways to do things slightly differently with them. But you are now fostering. Indeed, I think this is the third child that you've looked after. Is that right? It is, yes. And can you tell us a little about the other two young people you cared for? Um, One of them was an asylum seeker um, and the other one was a teenage, a typical teenager, really. (laughs) Yes, um, which isn't always the easiest, um, the easiest situation. No, um, how did you? I suppose it's a, it's a completely open question from someone who isn't a wheelchair user. Can you just explain, Alison, how you were able to do it? Because people will be wondering how you do it. Um, well, as I've said, I find different ways around things, but just generally. Um, complete consistency with the child, building a good relationship, um, a sense of humour, the ability to show empathy and understanding are probably the most important things. Um, And I can do all of those, just the same as anyone else. And the children, uh, do they question your use of the wheelchair? Do they mention it at all? Um, Yes, they do. It seems to be something they ask about in passing. They're curious as to why. Um, But following that, it it becomes not an issue at all. And it's just there as part of part of day to day life, really. Can we just acknowledge the obvious, which is that there will be some things that you are not best placed to do. But I guess it's then up to the agency or the authority involved to place with you a child that you could help. Yes, and there's a very careful assessment process, um, which which I went through. Um, I actually found it very positive, um, but there are ways that they could um, carefully match a child. I gather that some councils, some agencies, are, are much more forward-thinking than others in this area? 
They are, but we did struggle to get this research going. Did you? Largely because there are so few disabled people actually engaged out there as foster carers because there's been no role models. Most websites, which is the first place most people go, if they're thinking of fostering, uh, don't mention uh, disability other than perhaps caring for a disabled child. So there's just no culture of disabled people being foster carers. And it takes an exceptional person, such as Alison, who gets knocked down three or more times and still applies. This shouldn't be the case. We're not looking for exceptional people. We're looking for everyday people who can foster. At the moment, the disabled people who foster tend to be the exceptional ones who have risen above the discriminatory attitudes of fostering agencies. Yeah, well, I think it's important to emphasise, Alison, that in your case, the child you are currently caring for, it has been such a success that this child is going to stay with you really for quite some time. Yes, they are, yes. And can you just tell us, we don't want to give too much away, but tell us a little bit about your relationship with the child. Um, It's just developed fantastically well over the time that they've been um, with me. Um, When they arrived, they had lots of behavioural difficulties, um, were very difficult to take out, um, didn't really engage with education, needed lots of help. Um, Since then, we've Um, built on things that they can do Um, and they recently managed to take a grade one exam in music um, and uh, just started attending a school that was never thought possible for them to achieve so um, they've done fantastically well. So I mean that's incredible isn't it the the difference that you've already made the strides that the child has been able to make because as you said earlier of your your consistent care there has to I mean I I don't want to patronize you but I suspect you are rather a special person what what else do you think you bring you bring to this? Um, I'd say um, perhaps my experience with with children in the past has helped a lot Um, also the amount of time I have as a disabled person who wasn't perhaps able to work I have more time to put in um, to the child than perhaps someone who is working or has um, more um, to do outside the home would be able to But what you clearly do provide is a, a welcoming home an environment in which they feel utterly safe and protected and actually honestly Peter you can't put a price on that can you? No, I think the, um, as you mentioned earlier, the resilience, the life experience, the the knocks that many disabled people experience throughout their lives, these give them a certain resilience they can share, they can empathise with um, children who are fostered, who have actually come from often very traumatic and abusive backgrounds. So I think as Alison portrayed there, she's got the skills, the empathy, the insight, and disabled people should be valued as a rich asset rather than some kind of liability a foster agency might be taking on. You know, we've even had people say, oh, well, the, um, the child would become the carer of the, of the disabled person if they became foster carers. There's a very pathological view of disability out there as if all disabled people can't do very much at all. Whereas as Alison, you know, models very well, she, she plays to her strengths and mm-hmm. she gets around town and she gets to activities she uses public transport, taxis. She gives that child a full experience. And of course, let's not forget, Jane, many disabled people are parents already. Of course. So why can't they take on the actual, the extra skills uh, needed to be a foster carer for the, for the country? Really interesting, uh, thoughtful. Um, It's made me think. Uh, Thank you very much. Peter Unwin, Principal Lecturer in Social Work at the University of Worcester. And Alison, best of luck to you and the child um, in your care. And uh, congratulations to the child on already a grade one, more than I ever managed. So um, that's a fantastic achievement. Thank you both.